Oftentimes, school buses are outfitted with air conditioning units, wheelchair lifts, and many other accessories after they are sold to the school district. Eventually, these buses start experiencing battery issues because the originally installed alternator doesn't provide enough output to handle the new electrical demands. If the alternator is not upgraded, this will result in constant discharging of the batteries, premature alternator failure, and starting issues due to low voltage. Measuring the current draw for the bus is the best way to ensure the alternator has sufficient output for all of the vehicle's electrical demands. This will help you determine if you have the correct alternator for your application. Let's review the steps for measuring the current draw of your system. The first step is to make sure the batteries are fully charged. Partially charged batteries will result in inaccurate readings. Next, with the clamp-on ammeter, attach the clamp around the negative battery cables. Make sure the ammeter is set to amperage DC and zero meter. Remember, all cables connecting to the battery negative post need to be placed inside the ammeter clamp. Now for step three. With the ignition key on and engine off, turn on all accessories. The heater and defroster blower fan should be on high, lights on high beam, and wipers on high speed. Also, turn on the radio, interior and entry lights, video monitor system, stop flashers, clearance and warning lights, and any other vehicle accessories. In step four, with the clamp still in place, take a reading to get the approximate amperage draw. Record the reading. Then, turn off all the accessories and leave the ammeter in place. The next step is to record the amperage draw of the special needs lift, if the bus has one. With the key on and engine off, place a load on the lift and raise the lift. While the lift is going up, take a reading and record it. On this bus, for example, the lift drew 60 amps. Keep in mind the amperage draw may vary, depending on the type of lift being used and its age. For step six, measure the amperage draw for all accessories that automatically turn on when the engine is started. This may include air dryers, air compressors, and after treatments. You do this while the engine is running at operating temperatures and at high RPM with accessories off. Allow the batteries time to recover, and then once the current has stabilized, take a reading and then turn off the bus. Now for the final step, we will calculate the recommended alternator amperage rating based on our measurements. First, we must add all the readings together. Next, take the total and multiply by 1.2 to get the recommended alternator amperage rating. As a rule of thumb, the total vehicle amperage demands should be 20 to 30 percent under your alternator's rated output. In this example, the total equals 318 amps. So, you will want to make sure your alternator has an output of at least 318 amps. If this isn't the case, then it is recommended you replace the alternator with a higher amperage unit. If you are installing a higher output alternator, you need to also verify that your charging cables are sized appropriately for the higher output of your new alternator. The chart on the screen serves as a good reference guide and is available on our website. An alternator without sufficient output could result in frequent discharging of batteries, reduce alternator efficiency, making the engine work harder, increase fuel usage, decrease the life of the alternator, and create starting issues. When you are having the air conditioner or other components installed, that's a good time to consider upgrading the alternator to a Delco Remi high output alternator that is designed to meet your heaviest electrical loads. For further diagnostics, troubleshooting, or other questions, contact the Technical Support Center. You can also visit us online.